Hello and welcome to this 5 for 5th video that discusses adjacent and vertical angles. This topic is found in our uh, Grade 5 Everyday Math books in Section 3.5. And let's remember that this section is exposing the children to adjacent and vertical angles, but we as teachers may benefit from a quick review, and that's the goal of this short video. So let's begin with adjacent angles. Okay. Definition right out of our uh, Everyday Math Student Reference Book. Angles that are next to each other are adjacent angles. They have a common vertex, a common side, but no other overlap. So let's think about that for a second. They have a common vertex. They have a common side, but no other I'm not doing this right. <laughs> Start over. I, mean, I don't know. I just blanked out because I, I started with. I don't know. Well, it has to say because see. But no. Uh, it has to. Can I have the new? Sorry, Steve. Okay. Sorry, Sorry, Steve. Here we go again. Bodies. All right. Now I have to do this. What? Just the top just one. Take the whole the thing. Take the whole thing because we'll get here? confused. That's all the other. This okay. I'm going to do it. Ready? Down in that picture. Okay. 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 All right, Steve, take 210. <laughs> All right. Um, welcome and... These are my time. Phillies nails. I didn't put... Okay, here we go. Here we go. Um, hello and welcome to this 5 for 5th video to discuss adjacent vertical angles. This topic is found on our Grade 5 Everyday Math books in Section 3.5. Let's remember that while this section is exposing the students to adjacent vertical angles, we as teachers may benefit from a quick review, and that's the goal for this short video. So let's begin by reviewing adjacent angles. From our Everyday, Everyday Math Student Reference book, this definition is provided. Adjacent angles are angles that are next to each other. They have a common vertex and a common side, but no other overlap. So when looking at this first example provided, we have a straight angle, FIH, and within this straight angle, we do have a pair of adjacent angles. FIG, again that's angle FIG, is an adjacent angle to angle GIH. And again, looking at the definition, these angles are next to each other. They do have a common vertex as well as a common side. And it's very common with geometry that they um, very often they show adjacent angles as supplementary angles, so that's something we'll just need to get used to. It does not need to be supplementary. You can have angles angle one and angle two are adjacent angles. They share a common vertex, they share a common side. And again, they don't have to equal 180 degrees, it's just coincidence here. But using all of this background knowledge, let's look at example two. They're asking us to find the measure of angle Y. So now we do have to pull from previous knowledge and say, this is a straight angle. I already have 60 degrees, so what is 180 degrees minus 60 degrees? That lives, leaves us with the measure of angle Y being 120 degrees. Okay, moving on. Next are vertical angles. Okay. Vertical angles a little more involved, but please let's keep in mind this is for fifth graders. This is not the type of vertical angles that we studied in high school. It's just with two lines that intersect, the angles do not share a common side or vertical angles. But vertical angles have equal measure and they're also called opposite angles. Again, please keep in mind we're talking fifth grade, not high school. So they're saying when two lines intersect, I have two lines that just intersected thus creating one, two, three, four angles. And the vertical angles, they do not share a common side. So I have angle one with angle three. Again, common vertex, but not a common side. And angle two and angle four are vertical. So angle one and angle three, and then as well as angle two with angle four. Those are your sets of verticals. Looking at this example, where the notation is a bit more involved for the children, we also have two sets of vertical angles, one being ABD, vertical angle with angle CBE. That's the first set of vertical angles, and then we have a second set, which is here, 
angle ABC with angle DBE. Two sets per pair of intersecting lines. And on the bottom, this is again very common in assessment. We're looking at um, angles that have been provided for the children. We have a 40 degree angle with a 40 degree, and they may be asking them what is the angle of BCE. Well, you can use your background knowledge of straight angles, knowing that there's 180 degrees here. 180 degrees minus the 40 leaves me with 140 degrees. Now you can do two different ways. You can say if, C, if BCE is 140 degrees, so is ACD using the definition of vertical angles. Or the children can use a measuring approach where they physically measure the angle, or they can use the straight angle approach, knowing that the sum of these two adjacent angles is 180 degrees. Okay, putting it all together. Here are some examples that are very common in assessments. You provide, you're provided with two lines that intersect. I have 45 degrees here, so obviously angle A must also be 45 degrees. They are vertical angles, so they are equal in measure. Now, I'm going to use, again, going back to my straight line understanding of 180 degrees, 180 degrees minus 45 degrees is angle C, which is 135 degrees. And then, again, we have two different ways of solving this. We can say that C and T are vertical. Since C is 135 degrees, T must be, again, due to the definition of vertical angles, or the students can measure, physically measure angle T, but we're trying to get them away from that at this point. We're trying to build their knowledge of quick references. So if they know that C is 135, we want them to know that T is 135. Or they can go back to their straight angle background of 180. And then one more quick example. We have 133 degrees provided. S is its vertical angle, so S is 133 degrees. And we must in order to get R or T, do 180 degrees minus 33, which is 47 degrees. And then again, if R is 47, T is 47, because they are indeed vertical angles. Okay, there's our background for us as the teachers. Now what are the children going to be doing? That's a whole different story. In the journal page for the kids, they are going to be discovering all of this completely on their own. They are in partner pairs. But after we go through this, you may decide if you want to work this as whole group or put the kids in actual pairs. We are not providing them with any of the background information we all just reviewed. They're coming in. They have directions. Angles next to each other are adjacent. When two lines intersect, four angles are formed. These are called vertical. The children are reading all of this on their own, and they are completely doing this journal page on their own, again, in pairs through discovery. If angles ABD, so it's ABD and CBE are vertical. They're asking the kids to come up with another pair of vertical angles. So, you know, hopefully they're just going to see. These are completely opposite of each other, so they should, we hope, come up with the other set. Again, we'll walk through, we'll walk through the classes, we'll look at the pairs, we'll see who's struggling and who's doing okay, and we want to let them go with this. Then they get into adjacent angles. Again, the kids are discovering all of this on their own. When they get down to the actually coming up with like definitions of vertical and adjacent, they're going to be doing a lot of measuring. This says use your full circle protractor to measure. So the kids are not going to be using their straight angle background. They're going to be actually measuring this to be 120 degrees, measuring this angle to be 60 degrees, measuring this. Okay, they're going to be doing this on their own to come up with what they noticed about the measures. Again, what they noticed about the measures. After they complete this journal page, we're going to come together as a whole group, and we're going to go over all of their findings, and then we're going to introduce them to more formal definitions of vertical and adjacent. So this is a huge discovery day for the children. They are, again, completely on their own with this, unless they obviously are, are in need for some help. And, and we will circulate and help them. Okay, moving on. The homework for that night. What, what again, a little bit frustrating, if you notice this part of their homework, their study link page, this is so much more than just two lines intersecting to form angles. This is now we have some enclosed polygons. Um, we don't want to confuse the kids with this. 
So a little bit of practice before we assign the study link might be a good idea. Um, this, in this particular drawing, you can see this is 60 degrees. Then we have angle Q. That right there is a straight angle, so Q must be 120 degrees. Now looking at S, we see that S is a vertical angle with 70 degrees, so we have S equals 70 degrees. And that's leaving us now with R. So we have Q is 120, S is 70. Now we're left with R. Um, a little outside of where we are with our kids right now, but as educators it's worth a second to talk about. It is a quadrilateral whose sum is 360 degrees. So in adding up these sums, subtract from 360, you can get R. So we have. So a good way to close the lesson for this particular day is to take an example where we do enclose some of these intersecting lines. Again, we don't want to confuse the children when they go home with their homework. So looking at this particular example, it would be really easy to start with angle S. Angle S is a vertical angle with the provided 70 degrees. So angle S is 70 degrees. And then we look at Q. Well, Q is going to be supplementary with the 60 degrees because that is a straight angle. So Q is 120 degrees. Now that's leaving us with R. Um, please keep in mind that this is not something we're going to be giving fifth graders, but we as teachers might want to just take a quick look at this. This is a quadrilateral. It does have 360 degrees in it. So by adding the 120, the 70, and the right angle, we'll get a sum of 280 degrees. Subtract that from the 360, and that will leave us with an 80 degree measurement for angle R. Again, this one above fifth grade, but we just wanted to give an example to help the children with that homework assignment. You may even want to provide an, um, provide an example like this, but simply white out angle R, and we would be more than happy to send you any of these handouts that we've used through this presentation. Just email one of us and we'll get them to you. Okay, thank you so much, and uh, we will see you at the next five for fifth.